Hello, welcome to Don't Be Serious. Today we talk about Black Myth Wukong. The most exciting information of the new trailer is that it finally gave us the release date of probably the most anticipated game in 2024. Black Myth Wukong is to be out at 20 August 2024. Besides, the trailer also shows some new characters and scenarios that are mind blowing. Today I'm gonna focus on the blue skin painter featured in the opening who might just weight heavily in the story. The video showed us a blue skin that was placed humming, like yonder with a huge pair of horns. He's obviously a Long tribe. In the official setting, the Long Daoist Priest is known as Lam Choi. The combat scene featuring Lam Choi, the Daoist Priest flashed by in the 12 minute Unreal Engine 5 real time demonstration released on August 20, 2021, at 9 minutes and 49 seconds. He is using a Qinglong Jin Yu Do. The Azure Long Cliff Moonblade. Being a Long tribe descendant, his ability is releasing thunder. Interestingly, Lam Chao's chanting is a song named Hao Liu Go, Hao Liao Ge, from the first chapter of Chao Sui Kang, Hong Lao Meng, Dream of the Red Chamber, Chao Xue Qin, the head of China's four great classical novels in the Qing Dynasty. The original text is Sai Yan Do Hiu Shan Xin Hao, Wei Yao Gong Ming Mong Bat Liu, Gu Gam Zhang Shang Zai Ho Fang, Fang Chong Yi Dui Chao Mu Liu, Sai Yan Do Hiu Shan Xin Hao, Zi Yao Gam Ming Mong Bat Liu, Zhong Zhao Zi Han Zui Mu Do. 及到多时眼闭了，世人都晓神仙好，只有姣妻忙不了。君生日日说恩情，君死又随人去了。世人都晓神仙好，只有儿孙忙不了。痴心父母古来多，孝顺儿孙谁见了？好了 means good conclusion, a good ending. 好了歌 ，the song of a good end. This is a satirical and mocking discourse. The author employs this poet to express the people who strive for success, amass wealth, indulge in desires, and care for their descendants are all blinded by mortal desires, still not awakened. All of these pursuits are unreliable, promoting a realistic ideology that advocates for calmly reflecting on the realities of life. The satire highlights how people in real life are bound by worldly desires, preventing them from breaking the cycle of life and transcending to be immortals. A game adapted from Sayao Gay Journey to the West, an homage to another of the four great classical novels being ingeniously vowing to the narrative, is utter cleverness. What a wonderful dream. Well done, game science. After Lam Choi's brush descended, a noise emanated behind him. Accompanied by the question, you two want to be immortal? Pay attention. The sudden noise caused him to apply too much pressure in his brush stroke. However, he almost instantly knew who had intruded into the art gallery. He turned around calmly, looked at the person who entered, and asked a question whose answer he already knew. In a video, the opening lines of the song Hou Liu Go are used to clarify the game's core theme, the pursuit of the unattainable and the struggle against fate. I personally speculate that Lam Choi is not a villain. He might be responsible for guiding the chosen one. So, who is Lam Choi? Here are my few speculations. 1. Lam Choi could be inspired by the Chinese folklore immortal Lam Choi Wo, Lan Cai He. one of the most well known atheists in Taoism. 2. Alternatively, he might be the number one fortune teller in the original Sai Yao Gei, named Yun Shao Sheng, aka Mr. Diviner, San Fo Xin Sang, Yun Shou Cheng, a soothsayer who once precisely predicted the heavenly decrees and the fate of the Long King. The eight deities are a group of legendary Taoist deities widely known since ancient times. Among them, the eight deities who cross the sea represent various aspects of humanity. They are comprised of beggar, Butcher, Wandering Musician, Flower Girl, Fortune Teller, Hawker, and Scholar. All eight deities were originally mortal humans who attained immortality through Taoist practices, and among them is Lam Choi Wo. Lam Choi Wo lived in the Tang Dynasty and, in his youth, held the position of advisor Grand Secretary. 
Despite being male, he often dressed in female attire, carrying a flower basket. He was a wandering Taoist, typically seen in tattered blue robes adorned with a wide wooden belt, and wearing only one boot while bearing the other foot. In both ancient times, with feudalistic ideologies, and even in modern times, Nam Choi Wo could be described as an individual with a unique and eccentric style of dressing. However, despite a seemingly delicate appearance, Lam Choi Wo was a person of integrity, unafraid of authority, upright and incorruptible. He cared for the people, achieved remarkable political success, but later withdrew from public life due to openly advising against Emperor Xuanzong spiritism towards his relatives and conflicts with powerful officials. Lam Choi Wo chose seclusion in the Zhongnan Mountains becoming a hermit. Even in seclusion, Lam Choi Wo continued to empathize with the suffering of the common people, undertaking practical initiatives such as repairing bridges and roads. His deeds earned him a favorable reputation among the masses. After his death, his mortal remains were buried near the Sek Longbun, his hometown, while the spirit attained immortality through Taoist practices. In modern times, the genealogy of the Lam clan, Lam Si Chok Sao Chok Po, Lam Si Chok Po records. Lam Choi Wo, who was once an advisor grand secretary, due to his objections against the powerful minister Yang Guo Sui, he eventually resigned from his official position, separated from his wife and children, and embarked on an hundred days of cultivation before ascending to the heavens, becoming an immortal of the highest rank, that is, Dai Luo San Xin. The uninhabited stray Taoist has a fond of singing, mocking his soul. These are his favorite lines while his travel. Lam Choi and Lam Choi Wo, with only a one character difference in their names, makes people wonder if they are somehow connected. If Lam Choi is based on Lam Choi Wo, then this character is likely to serve as one of the mentors guiding the chosen one for a higher purpose. In the Chinese Chinese, 算卦可靈了。我每天送他一枚金色的鱼,他就給我算一卦,告訴我在哪撒網,在哪跑溝。只要按照他說的做呀,我每天都能打到這麼多魚啊。Yun AKA Mr. Diviner, Sun Fo Xin Sang. The book on the table is the Yin Sun Tou, which appeared in the game's trial. It is highly likely that Lam Choi is the original author of Ying San Tou. From the layout of Ying San Tou, we can see that the author was skilled not only in describing with words, but also in drawing vivid and lifelike pictures. According to the signature on the paintings, we know that he is Jun Sao Seng, the number one divinator in Sai Yao Pei Journey to the West. He once predicted the heavenly decree of the heavenly realm and the fate of the Long King. 你為反咗玉帝嘅聖旨,善著根改時神,黑球赤傳,觸犯天條,已經犯咗氣軍之罪啦。In the original Sao Ge, after violating the heavenly laws in the Golden River Long King incident, his whereabouts became unknown and no one knew where he went or what he did. This also set the stage for Jun Sao Sing. Since the game is adapted from Sai Yao Ge, it is reasonable for the game to use the Jun Sao Sing as a focal point in the storyline. The mirror at the beginning of the trailer shows the extraordinary painting skills of Lam Choi, lying with the exquisite illustrations in Ying San Tou. Furthermore, the studio doesn't randomly place a full well Ying San Tou on the table, the existence of this book is one of the hints, implying that he is the Mr. Diviner, Yun Sao Seng. As a fortune teller, 
he had long foreseen that someone destined would come to visit it. When someone approached from behind, he could immediately react and engage with the player calmly and cheerfully. Regarding Yang Santo, there's a description on the loading screen. A Dugula meticulously depicted the encounters of the destined one with peculiar characters along the way, drawing their images and recording their names, along with their live anecdotes in a traveler. This indicates that this Dugula is well aware of the entire background story of Black Reef Wukong, including logs, narratives, and undisclosed facts. The Dugula knows it all. Considering the points mentioned above, Lam Choi is capable of understanding the stories that arise from the heart, knowing numerous undocumented anecdotes of monsters and vividly illustrating them as if personally witnessed. Besides divination and forge telling, it seems there's no other way to learn all this stuff he knows. Therefore, I tend to believe he's a divine fortune teller in Sayakke. So why did Yun Saoseng become a blue-skinned long person? It is highly that Lam Choi is the reincarnation of Yun Saoseng, or has attained the status of an immortal long person through cultivation. Having personally experienced the process of cultivating into an immortal, he is well acquainted with the rules and disclosed details behind it. Naturally, in the aspect of becoming immortal, he has more authority to speak on the matter. Thus, he poses the question, You too want to be an immortal? The events in the Black Reef story have elapsed several hundred years since Sayauke. The divinator was once an ordinary human. If he failed to become immortal, he would have undoubtedly deceived by the time of the Black Reef storyline. Therefore, it could only be reincarnation or the divinator acquired longevity as a long person after becoming an immortal. Besides, a fun fact worth mentioning is that in Ming Dynasty's fantasy fiction Dong Yao Ge Journey to the East, Lam Choi Wo was an immortal in the beginning. He was endowed by Sun Hong the Monkey King with 500 years of energy of cultivation, resulting him to transcend to be mortal instantly. On the other hand, in another fantasy fiction we all know, Sayao Ge, Journey to the West, the Monkey King has absolutely no connection with the Diviner. Lastly, I have one final guess on Lam Choi's identity, which is Guan Yu, the warrior, wealth, and thunder god. Normally, people read about Guan Yu from another four great novel, Psalm of the Indie, Romans of the Three Kingdoms. Actually, the famous warrior god made his short cameo in Sai Yao Ge as well. In Sai Yao Ge, Guan Yu is one of the defenders guarding the South Heavenly Gate, entrance of Tian Ting, the Celestial Palace, who fight Sun Hong to defend the Tian Ting during the big event, wreaking havoc in the heaven. The skilled avenger with a single somersault leaps into the South Heavenly Gate, startling Hong Lao Gao Bap to all bow in this shock of sudden. Ma Xiu Wan Guan stood on guard, all exclaiming, Not good, not good. The thing causing chaos in the celestial palace has returned. The two of them bickered incessantly, arguing all the way, until they reached the outside of the South Heaven Gate. Seeing this, the rich and broad eyed Heaven became worried. Along with Ma Zhu Wan Guan, the four great marshals, and a multiple of other gatekeeping guards, quickly brandished their weapons to block his way. To enter Tin Tang to the Celestial Palace, one must get through the South Heavenly Gate, Lam Tin Moon. There will be a hundred thousand Celestial Soldiers alongside the four great marshals and one of the four great Heavenly Kings garrisoning the gate. Guan Yu is one of the four great marshals, and they are all under the command of Saifong Guang Mok Tin Wu. The Western World Eye Heavenly King, who is particularly responsible for the South Heavenly Gate. The weapon he holds, it is like on a weapon of the warrior god, 
Qinglong Yin Yu Dou. The Azure Long Cliff Moonblade. Furthermore, Guan Yu, including the other three great marshals, are affiliated to the Thunder God's Division of the Heaven. There are totally 36 Thunder Marshals and a large number of celestial beings titled the Thunder Gods of different ranks guarding the heaven. And therefore, Thunder is one of his abilities to fight against enemies. As we can see, Lam Choi showed that Thunder was his means of attack in the demonstration video. Judging from the weapon and the Thunder ability, Lam Choi is likely to be somehow related to Guan Yu the Warrior God. Yet his skin color is blue rather than red. So, what do you think? Who is the blue skin guy in Black with Wukong? Lam Choi Wan, the immortal, Yun Sao Seng, the diviner, Guan Yu, the god of thunder, warrior, and wealth. Or you have other person in mind. Comment down below to let me know your thoughts. This is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned and don't be serious for more Black with Wukong information. I'll keep sharing latest news, details, explanations, and everything I know in the future and ancient Chinese mythic stories, legends, and anecdotes. Until next time, I'll see you in the myth.